this, though. How many, how far does Foles have to take this to change the conversation about who the future is? Like, what does Nick Foles need to do? Is there anything he can do? And what is it this postseason to where this offseason, when they're starting at a $20 million a Nick decision. Foles option, yeah. that instead of declining that option, letting him go elsewhere, they pick up the option and they field phone calls on a Carson Wentz trade? Yeah, in my opinion, I still think Carson is the future, no matter how well Nick Foles plays. But if Nick Foles goes out and wins another Super Bowl, then the conversation changes. So it has to be when. What if he gets you to the Super Bowl, gets you to the championship I think, game? I think that may be the point as well. I mean, yes. if you get him to, to that Super Bowl game, then that conversation changes. And it, it may be that you trade Carson. Even if you trade sign and trade Nick, a lot of different things going on there. But I mean, you have to have that conversation if he gets you to that game, of course. I, I think it's, I, I really think for Eagles fans, this is simple. And for Carson Wentz, by the way. I would not want to get put back in this lineup because you are going to be a sub you're a six point underdog this week. If you win this week, you're going to be an even bigger underdog the following week. What you I think they are going to lose either this week or the next week against the Saints. I just think those are better teams they're up against and it's on the road. I don't think this Eagles team would have gone to the Super Bowl last year as the sixth seed having to play road playoff games. I think if you're Carson Wentz, the worst thing that can happen to you is Nick Foles beats the Bears. And then you get your job back, you get your head kicked in by the Saints, and everyone's blaming you. Right. You need for the city and the fans to see Nick Foles lose a playoff game. I think it's as simple. If, if Nick Foles gets to the Super Bowl, then you have to have a real conversation. Anything short of that, you're going to go with the bigger, stronger, faster, more talented number two overall pick, who's also, by the way, cheaper. He has that going for him as well because right. he's still on his rookie contract. Well, that's the reason why I don't think if you win this football game against the Bears and then have to go to New Orleans, that's the reason why you can't go back to Carson. You don't want to put that type of pressure on this young man. That's also the same reason why you can't bring Nick Foles back next year. You don't want that guy sitting on the bench. Exactly when, if if right. things go wrong for Carson, fans are cheering Nick Foles, Nick Foles, get him back in the game. You don't want that type of pressure for your young future of your franchise type of quarterback. No one right now is saying it's got to be Carson Wentz. I think everyone agrees that that Nick Foles should play this Chicago game. I think everyone agrees play the hot hand right now because they saw what playing the hot hand did last year. Who knows if lightning can strike twice, but it struck once with this team yeah. and you kind of just let the, the, the beast keep but, going. But I have a better chance with Nick Foles in the lineup because I believe for some reason it's this connection between him and Peterson. This offense has a rhythm and that gives this front seven an opportunity to hunt. You you talk about Fletcher Cox being able to come out and how aggressive he was in the pass rush against the Washington Redskins. What, what happened is they were getting converting first down. So it allows the defense to make sure that they can hunt. You know, they can let these pass rushers, you know, be able to, to, to fire off and protect this secondary. Because this secondary is a liability. And they're playing much better because of the front seven. The front seven is playing better because they're getting they're being able to get to the passer. And they're being able to get to the passer because of the rest. All comes back to St. Nick. Why, why do you think this team which has not looked like the defending champion team that most of us thought they would be all year, ha is playing better not just in the passing game, in all phases of the game since Nick Foles took over. Why do you think that is? A couple things is going on. They, they have much more of a balanced attack. Their offensive line is playing much better. Jason Peters, who has been hurt most of the season, is playing better at the left tackle spot. Lane jo Johnson is upset that he didn't make the Pro Bowl. He's playing much better. Brandon Brooks has been a, a Pro Bowl player all season long. So in the run game, they've been more productive. Uh, uh, Doug Peterson has committed to that run game. Then when you look at the quarterback position, Nick Foles is getting the ball to everyone. He's getting everyone involved. And just imagine what receivers feel if you don't touch the ball for a quarter or for a half. You don't have a target. You're out of the game. But Nick Foles has done a great job of getting Alshon available, getting uh, opportunities for Nelson Aguilar, still getting Zach Ertz to football, getting the ball to Darren Sproles, who's been healthy and helped his football is team the last couple of weeks. Is that that he goes through all his reads, or is that the play calling? I think it's part of the play call, and Doug Peterson has done a great job of getting his team ready every single week to play. But also, you have to give these guys a big-time opportunity down the field. Give Alshon an uh, opportunity to jump over top of someone and yeah. catch the football. Nick has done that where there's been times where Carson has failed to do that, and now the offense looks much more fluid when you get everyone involved. Carson had become, he had gotten such a rapport this year in particular with Zach Ertz right. that it seemed like that was his first read, and Ertz was typically yeah. open, so it was his only read. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get chunk plays typically from Zach Ertz. He got a lot of catches for eight yards, catches for nine yards. And the problem with that is, and we see this with any team that doesn't have chunk plays, it just takes one sack.
Yep. One holding penalty, and all of a sudden your drive is stalled. With Foles, man, he is chucking that sucker deep. He's letting Nelson Aguilar make plays, Alshon Jeffrey. We haven't even said the name Golden Tate, because Golden Tate has been a guy who God, really he hasn't been right. a major factor, but we know how good he can be. It's what makes this team dangerous, and it's why, as much as I think the, Bear, I think the Bears are the best team in the NFC, not name the Saints. But, man, the Bears got to be looking at this game saying, man, I sure wish we were playing the Vikings. Right. Like, I think the Bears yeah. are maybe wishing that the Vikings right, would have yeah. somehow won last week against the Bears so they would be the sixth seed instead of the Eagles. If you're an Eagles fan, the one thing you have to look forward to, you're playing one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the league. I think a lot of people say the best defense in the league. You have some experience. That's the one thing that the Chicago Bears team does not have. Experience in the playoffs, being able to win. How does Mr. Trubisky respond mm -hmm. to his first playoff game, first opportunity to go out there and win in the playoffs for an Eagles team that went to the Super Bowl and won tough games last year? This, this, That experience, and you've been in the playoffs, you understand how it is. That experience certainly does play a part into it just a bit. And I love Lane Johnson against Mac, and I love Peters yep. against, against Floyd. I That's think right. you run at the little guy and see what he can do, see if he can handle that smoke. Brian, thanks so much for thanks joining for us. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest thanks, of the day buddy. and the holiday. Coming up, LeBron says he's the greatest.